Okay, so now we're ready for putting the idler pulley onto the idler side of the X end. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our little two-inch stub bolt. Uh, we're going to put the uh, two ZZ washers. We're going to need four nuts. Some people might use three, but we're going to use four. And then we're going to use uh, two of the regular 5 16 inch washers. And then uh, you're going to need your half inch or 13 millimeter wrench. You're also going to need uh, the adjustable wrench and you're going to need the x-axis sub-assembly. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and uh, we're going to put two of these nuts onto our threaded bolt or threaded rod here to make a stub bolt out of it. Okay, so once they're through there, uh, what we're going to do, uh, they can have a little bit of a gap there, or you can make it flush either way. Uh, we're going to take a wrench, tighten it up around there on one side, and then on the other side, we are going to tighten it against each other. And so that's basically uh, what they call a, turning one of them into a jam nut. And the good news is that this is steel, so you can put some force on there. Uh, not like the brass extruder ends that uh, would actually yield. But uh, anyway, there's our stub bolt. So next up, we're going to take a washer, take the sharp side towards the nuts, so that the smooth side is towards the washer or towards the ZZ bearings. We're going to put two of the 608 ZZ bearings in there. We're going to put our other washer. Then we're going to thread this into the hole. And that hole, I already know that you uh, can't actually force this in there. That's by design. We want it so that it's tight. So you're actually going to have to sort of thread this in there. And it's a bit of a, a bit of a threading job to get it to go there. You want to try and keep it as parallel as possible. I'm a little off there, but that's not going to be a big deal. And keep threading it. If you have to, use your wrench. Uh, just try not to uh, twist this this way or that way to break this. Uh, once it's all in compression, then it'll have a lot more strength to it. But for now, we're just going to twist this until we get it on there. Okay, so that's fairly tight. You know, as tight as you're going to make a plastic nut anyway. So we're going to take the nuts here, and we're going to try and twist it on if we can. It's a little bit hard to get your fingers in there, especially if you got big fingers. And get that so that it's tightened on there a little bit. Okay, so now that we've got both sides on there, we're going to take our adjustable wrench. We're going to keep it on the outside. And this is where having the combination wrench really helps out quite a bit. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, we're going to take this. We're going to just kind of tighten it up. And there it is. So it's actually putting a little bit of compression on there. We don't want to squeeze it so bad that we're deforming it, but we just want to have it kind of tight on there. And if you see, there's a little bit left over. Uh, if you wanted to, you can adjust these to have there. I guess we'll just go ahead and uh, leave that other bolt on there. The truth is, uh, with this plastic acting like a nut, not acting like a nut, um, this really never ever yields. There's really not a lot of torsion put on this. Uh, the bearings themselves flow so good, so we're not going to use the fourth one after all. Uh, there is a little bit on there that we could put it on there if we needed to, or we wanted to. We don't really need to. So anyway, there is the X and idler pulley. If you look, I no longer use fender washers on the outside because the double bearings, uh, you really want to have the belt go right straight down the middle of that. And with the double bearings, you don't need to worry about it. 